Greyfriars Bobby, the classic story of the most famous dog in Scotland, written by Richard Brassey. Greyfriars Bobby is the most famous dog who ever lived in Scotland. He was so famous that a statue was put up to him in Edinburgh. He was born about 150 years ago, but nobody knows where. Some people say the Highlands, some say Sky. Some say he was born in the Pentland Hills where his master was a shepherd. This is nonsense. We know that Bobby belonged to an Edinburgh policeman named John Gray. He was a Sky Terrier and his job was to bite the ankles of escaping criminals. Bobby was good at that. But one bitterly cold winter, John Gray fell ill with a terrible fever. Bobby snuggled close to him to try and keep him warm. He stayed beside his master even when John Gray died. He followed the funeral procession to Greyfriars Churchyard. Bobby stayed on after the last mourner went home. He watched his grave was filled in. He stood in the bare earth and howled. When night came, he crept under a gravestone to keep guard. The days came and went and still Bobby refused to leave his master's grave. Dogs were not really allowed in the churchyard but James Brown, the gardener, felt sorry for Bobby and let him stay. On cold nights, he even invited him in, but Bobby would never desert his master for long. When spring came, Bobby chased away all the cats in the churchyard. Mr Brown was pleased. The cats had been a nuisance. Bobby soon made plenty of other friends. There were the poor people, whose crowded houses backed onto the churchyard, the boys of Harriet's school, who climbed over the wall, the owners of all the nearby eating houses, and a soldier who used to take him up to the castle to see the gun, which was fired off every day at one o'clock. Bobby soon got into the habit of setting off for dinner at the sound of the one o'clock gun. People gathered each day to see him trotting past. The story of a faithful dog had spread all over Edinburgh. One day, a new owner arrived at Bobby's favourite restaurant. Mr Trail was not from Edinburgh and had never heard of Bobby, but he realised that many people paid to eat there just to see him. I've known him since he was a puppy. He gave Bobby lots of extra tasty food to make sure he came every day. He even made up stories about Bobby for anyone who asked. His master was a shepherd. He died in my arms. But Mr Trail was not so keen when he was ordered to appear in court to explain why he hadn't paid Bobby's dog licence. He's no my dog, your honour. He still belongs to his dead master. Are you suggesting we dig up his master and ask him for the money? The most important person in Edinburgh was the Lord Provost. When he heard the story, he was touched by Bobby's faithfulness. He announced that he would pay Bobby's licence for life. He gave him a special collar with a brass plate. Grey Friars Bobby from the Lord Provost, 1867, licensed. The story was reported in all the newspapers. Grey Friars was soon crowded with sightseers, painters and photographers. It's even rumoured that Bobby had a visit from Queen Victoria and her servant, John Brown. See, Brown, he mourns his master as we mourn our Albert. Oh, you're a foolish woman. A lot of nonsense has been talked about Bobby over the years. Some people said he never existed just because they couldn't find him when he visited the churchyard. There's no dog here. Others, who wouldn't have known a Sky Terrier from a poodle, pronounced that Bobby was a Scotty. He's a Scotch Terrier. Some people just wanted to make a name for themselves. A journalist made headlines by claiming he had invented the whole story after a vicious dog chased him into the churchyard. And Mr Trail went on making up stories about Bobby until his dying day. I was his friend when he had me a friend in the world. It's not surprising that when an American lady decided to write a book about Bobby, she got many things wrong. It didn't help either that she had never been to Scotland and made most of it up. But the book was very popular 
and years later Walt Disney made a film based on it. Whatever people may say about Bobby, we know enough to be sure that he did exist. At Huntley House Museum in Edinburgh, you'll find his collar, his bow and a real photo of him, looking rather old and sad. You'll even find a photo of Mr Trail and his family with Bobby. Bobby spent 14 years faithfully guarding his master's grave. When he died, he was buried in a flower pot in front of Greyfriars Church. A hundred years later, a stone was put up to mark the spot. And even today, there are people who say they see him chasing cats in the churchyard. <laughs>